Hey, I'm Anton and this is Anatoly, Anatoly yeah. Yeah, from Ukrainian.com and uh, today is July 12, 2013 and uh, we are on the Nevitska Castle, uh, Transcarpathia, Ukraine and we are doing a kitchen cast from here with our uh, American guests of the camp, David Laporte and Zach Hochhalter. American brothers! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> We also have uh, pretty much the entire camp who are watching the cast, and uh, they will be able to ask uh, David and Zach questions about their stay in Ukraine and how it has been. So, uh, yeah, tell just uh, in two, three words uh, where do you guys come from? I'm from the Appalachians, which is a mountain range in the southeastern part of the U.S. in the state of Tennessee. And I'm from the Great Plains of North Dakota, which is in the middle at the top in the United States. Yeah, so actually how uh, I met David and Zach was really cool. Uh, it was a year and a half ago uh, when uh, I was on my mission hitchhikable uh, trip around the United States and uh, I used couch surfing and uh, they hosted me in the Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, close to Mount Rushmore, so, uh, which I really wanted to see. and that took us together and uh, I was able to surf in their Peterson Hall in the uh, right. <laughs> That's right, Peterson Hall. <laughs> yeah, which I was in just for two days, but I remember it just now how awesome it was. So I'm really glad you guys got to Ukraine so soon. <laughs> so are we. Uh, yeah, not like after 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> two uh, old men come over Ukraine to find out his friends. Yeah, <laughs> so ask something. Okay, so um, was the decision to come over Ukraine pretty spontaneous or, or it was planned for a month at least? Uh, maybe a month yeah. uh, before that, I don't know, Eastern Europe was the plan. Yeah, we planned so. to, to travel after our classes were out and before we have to go back to the States and you know everyone goes to Western Europe, so why, why not the East? Mm -hmm. And then right. just hook together friends, oh, we know Ukrainians, yeah, let's go visit them. Exactly. Yes. Et voilà. And so then, we're happy in that. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, David wrote to me that uh, they were gonna visit Slovakia and uh, the Tatras and then a tip of Ukraine, like he said. And <laughs> it so happened that I am doing this camp here uh, near Uzhorod, Ukraine. So they spent like four days here, what was it? Yeah, we've been here four days. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. track. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so how did you get to Europe? Tell just a few words about what you were doing in, uh, and where. Well, I spent a semester studying French in France because I wanted to learn a new language and live outside of the U.S., see what Europe is like, and so I've I've really enjoyed Paris and traveling in France and learning a new language and spent the whole semester there and now we're traveling together but before we have to go back. Uh, how you get that idea to go to the Europe? So I don't think it's... Yeah, I mean America is so big. Well, yeah. why <laughs> and uh, it's other continent, yeah, you know, yeah. you can go to Canada yeah. at least. We've, we've thought about this and it's, uh, the way I put it is uh, America is very naturally unique and wild and very different by region geographically and climate but Europe is culturally and lingually diverse yes. and unique and that's a whole different type of traveling we have destinations in the US we go to mountain range canyon desert and then Europe it's like this culture that language these people mm -hmm. it's more about the people in Europe and I mean of course the scenery is beautiful but like David said, it's about culture and language. And we both had some background in, uh, I, I came to Europe to study German and to do a project in Kiel. And that was really rewarding. I, I had a great time with a team of international students, which was something I've never had the experience of before in the United States and probably wouldn't get such a rich experience in the United States. Um, I didn't know that before I came to Europe, but uh, now I do. So, yeah, it's, we came here and David had taken French in high school and I had taken German in high school and now I wow. know that most of the food that wow. I eat comes from Ukraine, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, don't you th uh, do you think that 
the density of cultural things in Europe much more higher than in US or you think that's just the same the same the same quantity but the one language for all the USA. Ah, okay. There there are regional cultures in, what did you in the just US. Ask? They understand it. That's yeah, we got it. Yeah. We got it. They understand it. <laughs> we we understand. <laughs> and uh, we we do like the regional cultures in the U.S. and like to try different foods and see how different people live there. But it's uh, such recent developments, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, because the United States is such a newly uh, populated area with European immigrants. And only approximately 250 years old since our independence. So. Yes, whereas uh, in Europe, your ethnic identities are much stronger because you've had to defend what you consider your territory over hundreds of years and your language has developed and it's so much more enrooted in who you are. And the traditions here are so much older, so you have something that has been carried down over generation over generation and David and I have discussed this just last night that we're trying to hold on to traditions that we know are disappearing now in just the few short years that our families have been in the United States. So maybe our families came from Italy or Ukraine or Germany and brought some of that tradition with us or with them, but we're, we're slowly it's being incorporated into American culture, whatever that is. And so, yes, regionally there are differences, but not as stark, not a stark contrast like there is in, in Europe. So can you tell that the U.S. culture is a composition of some pieces of European cultures? So can you see that components right now, or it's mm. developed to something already new, extremely new? I'm not sure that you can tell it's distinctly European. I think there are some traces of Europeanism. Yeah, uh, and you can see different uh, traces of parts of Europe. Um, or when I've traveled in Europe, I've seen, oh, I, uh, this reminds me of a certain aspect of a local regional culture in the U.S. When I was in Norway and Sweden, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the way people spoke, yeah. what people eat. I'm like, oh, am I in Minnesota? <laughs> and because uh, present-day Northern Great Lakes in the U.S. were settled by Scandinavian mm -hmm. immigrants. And the same for me, Germans from Russia. The cuisine here is almost exactly the same as what I grew up with and what I had when I was young. And even my grandparents spoke... German, which mm -hmm. is, uh, I realized recently, Plattdeutsch, which is right next to where I studied in Germany, they spoke Plattdeutsch. Oh, right, so, but, uh, yeah, so it's in like half an hour or so, we'll have to walk you downhill and uh, you'll go on, go on to Romania, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, from your stay in Ukraine, I know, what, what you guys think? Oh, man, I think... <laughs> Most <laughs> long pause. <laughs> I think most of all, it's the most. Uh, Just as a summary. Yeah, most at home that I felt. Not, not in what I've seen. I think Poland was closer to America in what you see, like visually. Visually, mm -hmm. but I think emotionally and. I don't know, just the feeling was more like home. Just the other day when we went swimming, we went to a little ice cream store, which is something that I did when I was at home, and that made me feel really at home. And the food uh -huh. we cooked here made uh -huh. me feel yeah, like I, remember that. I was at my family's house. So I think, for me, it was more an emotional feeling at home rather than seeing the same things around. So uh, really Yeah, and I think he's this feeling is coming from the good group atmosphere we've had and it's yeah. we're we're the only ones besides Ukrainians and Belarusians and <laughs> we've just been able to be they're all watching there just just be dropped into this culture. Yes, we've not like seen all the sights of the country or whatever, but we've experienced how they live and how they react and how they interact with each other. And that has given us a taste of the culture here. But I think that uh, maybe maybe Ukraine in general is more than I expected because the Cold War being not so long ago, many older Americans and middle-aged Americans uh, try to scare people of the former USSR and what it's like yeah. and 
And maybe not just so much scare, just... but just there is still a almost subtle lingering of pushing that information away. Like, okay, let's not talk about, you know, we never hear about Eastern Europe. We never hear about Ukraine or Belarus or Russia. You know, it's it's that land that's far away. It's just and all blended into something like yeah, a blank it's spot just on the map. A blank spot, yeah. So the word Belarus is new for you when you've since you've come to Europe. I mean not new. Was it? <laughs> not new, but now it has meaning, right? We okay. had a word Belarus, but it has things underneath it. And right? we can associate dances with it and food yeah. with it and alcohol with it and wonderful people we've met from yeah. Belarus. Uh, questions from the audience? Well, okay, guys. Belarus question. Okay. You're Were you afraid of communists while coming to the post-Soviet states? I think we were both aware that the communists no longer exist in the, in the eastern states, you guys so, so we would not smart. be afraid. Maybe <laughs> afraid of the blandness of architecture from the Soviet uh, yes, era. Yes, exactly. Uh, the gray scale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what will you? What would you recommend to see? to your fellow Americans to see in uh, Europe and especially in Eastern Europe? Yeah, especially in Ukraine. Experience. Especially in Ukraine. Well, we haven't this seen camp. that much in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Probably the Novitsky Castle. I hear they do volunteer camps, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Not oh. for sure. Like in Europe, what do you like them? What do you recommend to Americans to see in Europe? Oh man, that's in Europe. really difficult. Yeah. In Europe, an entire <laughs> continent. <laughs> One thing. Yeah. Asia. Try depends. Asia. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what you want to see. Yeah. Uh, what I, is surprising? What is like amazing? I think if you want to see something very. How do you say? Shocked. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> traditional in yeah. the American sense when you come to Europe if you want to have the traditional European experience what most Americans would think of when they think of coming to Europe then yes go to Western Europe see Rome Amsterdam Paris Barcelona Hamburg Ber Berlin all of those but I think if you want to have something totally different and something very unique then you have to come to Eastern Europe. I mean, most people don't know about this. I mean, and I think... Be an explorer. Yeah, be an yeah. explorer. I think seeing the Tatras was very, very rewarding and interesting because in Europe you don't have that many mountain ranges where the regulations are lower so you can enjoy backpacking like we can in America. And I think the Tatras gave us a taste of that, like what Europe can offer as far as natural places. Yeah, but definitely just uh, not necessarily go east, but just off the beaten path. Like we were in Catalonia, yeah. and I was in Barcelona for a few days with a friend, and then we met up with Zach later in Girona. And Girona is this small town that tourists don't go to, that you don't hear English spoken, you hardly hear Spanish spoken. Like, honestly. Yeah, that's <laughs> and that was, we, uh, we had an unbelievable time there, the hospitality, the atmosphere, and I, I preferred it so much more to Barcelona. Or, like in Slovakia, you know? Yeah. Maybe Americans don't even know it's a country? Czechoslovakia? <laughs> yeah, maybe they don't know that Czechoslovakia is not existing. And we knew very little about the culture there, what people did yeah. there. I and mean. I honestly, that's been like one of the most impressionable places we've been, the way we were treated, like, Oh, you're Americans, you're here. We were invited into homes, we were fed, we stayed relatively intoxicated and... <laughs> relatively <laughs> intoxicated, yeah. All, That's a way to put it. <laughs> all from the hospitality of the people we met along the way. Okay, th th tell just a couple words about that. You, you guys are so serious, I mean, and uh, you talk smart stuff. And then uh, about how you travel, right? Uh, you're not... You're traveling on a low budget, right? Yes, <laughs> very low. Actually... And, and on a high impression budget, right? Yes. yes. Uh, so, That's I... Good. Low, yes. Low, low expenditure, high impression. Yeah, so... So, I think 
we have an we have an informal goal of spending only two hundred dollars, and US we're doing dollars. U.S. dollars. We're doing really well on that goal, actually. I'd say roughly mm. estimated, we're probably about seventy-five. Yeah. So, and we're over halfway down on our trip. So. And so, I guess we're traveling somewhat non-traditionally, maybe especially for Americans vis visiting Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, backpacking Europe, as uh. we like to say in America, which often means hosteling and visiting only large cities. Whereas we via trains, and yeah, yeah, via um, trains, buses, stuff, yeah, Euro lines. Whereas we've been doing only uh, well, as much as oh, as much hitchhiking as possible. Yeah, we've taken a couple buses and trains. We're gonna get on a train soon. But yeah, we we have to not miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've tried to hitchhike as much as we can. So I I started in Paris, and got to hear Ukraine. I guess that's a long ways. That is a long ways. Yeah. And 95 percent hitchhiking. And I started in Kiel where David met me so we've been and we uh, gone a long way on hitchhiking. We haven't, couch we haven't paid for lodging. Yeah we have not so we've paid either for lodging. camped or couch surfed. Or couch surfed or been hosted by friends so. Oh uh, yeah. 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 I would surfing. ask you to tell the viewers what couch surfing is but that would take like another hour so, yeah. <laughs> couch surfing <laughs> yeah. hospitality exchange google it <laughs> google it it's yeah. there <laughs> um yeah what do you think i think these guys are great whatever well, we think ukraine is great <laughs> and belarus so uh, when we get there one day have you have you idea to come back to europe maybe a, a two or three years later it's I pretty, you define it it's pretty far from the US, you know, it's other continent. Actually, I may have an unofficial plan already started to come back next May. So. Wow. Oh. Okay, that's a spoiler. We okay. won't elaborate okay. on that. Yeah. I don't have any plans, but I look at it this way. You guys have to jump through hoops to get a visa to go anywhere, and yeah. The nations that I can travel to visa free, like why not jump on that? Of course yeah. I'm coming back to Europe. <laughs> yeah. I was just telling it today we were sitting in a this coffee place in Mukachevo and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah and David and Zach they were like having a cup of coffee and thinking, oh Zach what do you think uh, what visa regime do we have with Romania? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I think we're going there tonight. <laughs> Yeah. There, if there should be some troubles. <laughs> okay, so, uh, if there are some countries which you need visa, yes. or can you count them on the fingers or you need more than 10 North fingers Korea. for that? Uh, no, there we are quite need, a few. Yeah, more than 10 fingers, but in okay. Europe, not very many. Yeah, in Europe, just Belarus, Russia. That's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Ask him about languages. Oh my god, how long do you want to talk about languages? <laughs> yeah, just, I don't, why are you learning languages? American don't learn languages. Do That's exactly yeah. why. Because I, I see this, we want uh, to I see be this paper here, which is all written the, in Polish, right? And uh, the, uh, is it written in Polish? Uh, well, most things, Slovakian. Slovakian. That's most Slovak. things are Polish. Yeah. Yeah. Polish. And, and that's... Ukrainian. That's my address somewhere on there. Yeah. <laughs> There's also some maps written in other languages. Yeah, we got plenty. That's so is Russian. it just being being a hipster? <laughs> no. <laughs> <It's just because laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe initial motivation was hipsterish, but uh, um, I think what I came to realize, and I think David did too, is to get to the heart of a culture, you have to access it via their their language because. There's certain things that every language can express, and people can always express themselves best in the tongue they grew up with. So, it's it's very close to people's hearts, and it's really the only way to get to know people. And even if we never become fluent in some of the languages we've learned, it's it's cultural appreciation. We've seen so many times, often British or Americans, but many others as well, who go to a place and immediately expect everyone to speak their language mm -hmm. and not even be able to say hello or thank you in the tongue of the country they're in and it's uh and we want to travel not only to see the churches or the mountains or whatever but to become a part of the people that live there and if you don't have an appreciation for their language how can you have an appreciation for their culture <clears throat> Things that's... <laughs> 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 
No, for Russia, not that. Yeah, it's a good note to, I think, wrap this up. So, yeah, we're really, we're really glad you came. It's really nice to see you again and, and to meet you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, likewise. Yeah, we, we were also able to catch David in France by accident, but yeah, yeah. Hope to see you guys somewhere else in the world real soon. I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah, so soon enough. I'd like to see you in in US. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, get to you. Um, yeah, just a gift for you guys from Ukraine. So uh, <laughs> this is kind of more to Zach because I know Zach collects teas, which oh, is not that's here. right. <laughs> yeah, Anton so gave me the name. It's a, it's a hitchhiker's tea. Oh and, man. Yes. And uh, of I'm really glad that you came to the Europe, and maybe you will bring the idea to travel here. In, to the Eastern Europe, to, to the US. Of course yeah. we will. And the more people will come Ukraine. over here. Yeah. <laughs> more friends, more connections, that always really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. of course. And maybe, uh, I hope, the word Ukraine will associate with something good. <laughs> yeah. With the time. We'll make, we'll make sure that happens. And we'll change Anyone it read? from the Ukraine to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> and other and Belarus, not other names it's yes. been known as. Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> Silence! I kill you. Redurke. I will kill you. And uh, oh, shit with yeah, me. so let's go downhill because we're gonna miss the train. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was David and Zach from America here at the Nevitska Castle. America. And, uh, it starts the apostrophe M. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, we are Anton and Anatoly from Ukrainian.com.